This class is concerned with instruments of trade policy. In other words, ways in which governments can affect the amount of trade that takes place, international trade that can take place. As you'll see from the bottom right hand corner, uh, there are only eight slides in this class. It's a very short class. Some of the points we mention, however, are very important and it's worth knowing these points in the context of international trade because they are used. So although it's a short class, it is quite an important class. So let's look at some of the ways in which governments can influence international trade. The first way is, is by the use of a tariff. Now a tariff is simply a tax on imports imposed by the government of the importing country. So a tariff is, is just another word for a tax. It's a tax on the imports of goods from other countries. If a, if a country is running a deficit on its balance of payments and it wants to rectify the deficit, so it may want to restrain or, or stop completely some imports, one way to do it is to impose a tax on those goods. So the imports are still allowed into the country except now they have to pay a tax, a tariff. And the government receives that tariff but the consumers in the country will be faced by, with higher prices which may deter them from buying the good. So a tariff is, is widely used. There's also a, a quota. This is a restriction on the amount of the good that a country will import. Uh, it's it's a lot uh, more severe in a sense than a tariff. With a tariff uh, the good is still allowed in uh, but it's taxed. With a quota the government says only a certain amount is allowed in the country. Now, once the quota is reached no more. So uh, for example the country may say it's a, it'll allow 1000 cars of a particular type. So that's it. No, no more cars after that. Of course the effect of the quota will be still to put the price up. Um, the, there may be a black market in the product. Uh, consumers in the country may really want the product and, and the people who are fortunate enough to uh, get some when they're first imported, when, when the quota had not been reached, those people may, f uh, may experience uh, a demand for the product and enable them to sell it on at a higher price. So it may lead to secondary markets. But the point is that the government restricts the amount of the import. Physically restricts the amount of the import. There's also the possibility of a voluntary export restraint. Sometimes when countries are um, very efficient at producing something they can dominate world trade in that particular product and perhaps that's to the detriment of developing countries or countries who have just started to make similar products or start to industrialize. So those countries may ask the very efficient country to restrain exports, to, to please stop exporting so much, to give their new companies a chance to set up and get started. So it sometimes happens that countries will try to restrict exports, will try to uh, control exports and that will help the developing countries to get their industry started up and, and get a foothold in the industry. So um, it's not often used, it's not often talked about, but it is a possibility. A subsidy, well, a subsidy is, is the same as we, we meet in microeconomics. Uh, it means a rightward shift of the supply curve. If you, if you think about supply and demand diagram, this causes the supply curve to move to the right. This is a payment made by the home government to the producers of goods and services. So in effect it reduces the cost of production. Um, if, if companies can make a product for ten dollars and the government gives it a subsidy of a dollar then really they're making the product for nine dollars. So it's like cutting costs. Um, sometimes 
government subsidise companies to export. Uh, sometimes to do it, try to do it secretively, so that the the companies in that are are receiving the goods, that are importing the goods, don't think there is uh, any subsidy associated. But in effect, it's a way of helping producers. It just cuts the cost. So subsidies could be used, and indeed subsidies are sometimes widely used in certain areas. Environmental or health and safety standards. Uh, sometimes international trade is restricted because goods don't meet particular standards. Um, it could be abused by governments as well. Sometimes governments want to restrict trade from a certain country or they want to simply restrict the amount of imports of a certain good. They may increase their requirements, their environmental or other health and safety requirements. They may increase these so that the importer finds it very difficult to meet the new conditions. Uh, it is a way of restricting trade and of regulating trade. It's uh, it's not meant to be. If we look at the the words on the paper, it's environmental or health and safety standards. the The purpose seems to be to protect the public against faulty goods, or to ensure that the product is made in a in a green fashion. It's made in a way that is uh, good for the environment and it can be disposed of at the end in, in an environmentally friendly manner and so on. But in fact the policy is aimed at controlling trade, controlling international trade. So it's it's been a bit devious. It's it's saying one thing but in fact it's meant to do something else. It it's it's saying that it's health and safety and protecting the public and protecting the environment that's what it's saying but in fact what it's doing is trying to restrict trade and regulate trade so it's a bit devious <coughs> excuse me uh, the last one we look at is bureaucratic formalities sometimes importers face uh, a lot of bureaucracy to try and import goods a lot of paperwork uh, a lot of processing, uh, it's not straightforward and this may deter trade. Sometimes governments have inordinate paperwork, large amounts of uh, bureaucracies to offices to go and visit and papers to be stamped and the goods have to be moved from one warehouse to the next and checked and and so on. It's bureaucracy. In fact, what it's doing is trying to restrain trade, restrain imports. So governments are keen to export. Uh, clearly exports create jobs and create prosperity, but imports, those are a drain on the country. So one way to try and get around it is to, to try and stop the imports, constrain imports by having bureaucratic uh, procedures. These are some of the ways in which uh, governments may try to affect international trade, try to affect in particular imports, and I've just listed out some of them here. Um, as you read across the material on international trade, you may find others, and if you do, please make a note of them, uh, or even send us a message and tell us you we want to uh, add the following which you've come across. But we think that this list is um, detailed and it covers the major points. But that's all we're going to deal with in this one. These are some of the issues associated with instruments of trade policy, uh, instruments that may be used to regulate imports. Um, and that's all we're going to deal with in this video. So thank you for watching.